Welcome. My name is Dr. Greg Malvo. I'm the college-wide coordinator for study abroad at Montgomery College. And I'd just like to share with you a few things about how to prepare for study abroad. Um, and this is an opportunity that's open for not only students, but faculty, uh, staff, and administrators. Although we tend to give preference to the students first. Uh, to get started, in terms of options for study abroad, you can do long-term study abroad, semester study abroad. Uh, for faculty, there are internships and teaching opportunities, particularly in the summer. But let's start off with long-term study abroad for students. Students have an option of over 30 countries to choose from, and we are part of the consortium known as the College Consortium for International Studies, or CCIS. Students can look through this consortium, but also they can choose different colleges and universities throughout the world that maybe are not part of on our designated list. So students tend to look for study abroad about six to nine months in advance, and they'll come to my office, they'll see me, and we'll talk about what country first off they would like to go to, and then from there consider their field of study, and then select or narrow down to an actual location that's abroad. As we prepare for that student to take advantage of study abroad for long term, they will work on making sure that they have a passport that is updated, although not every student needs a passport because we have international students who also take part in study abroad. Um, also, that student will get a hold of their unofficial transcript, and they will also get a hold of different materials that are necessary, like filling out our actual long-term study abroad application. They'll fill out courses that they would like to take at that institution abroad now that they've figured it out, and they'll list at least five courses so that we can figure out through a transcript evaluator which of these courses will transfer back to our college at Montgomery. Also, what will happen is the student will apply for the uh, application abroad, which tends to be online for that institution. Uh, also, we have short-term study abroad, and that tends to be for two weeks, and that's for non-credit. And that will also be an opportunity for faculty as well, because a faculty member will help to lead that short-term program, and it could be in a number of different locations throughout the world as well. There's a lot of preparation for the short-term study abroad, and tends to be a year in advance in which the faculty start to work on this, and I partner with them. This can be a course that they have that's existing and tends to be at the college, and so they then start to look at that course and the materials and the subject matter in that short-term course, and then they plug it into the short-term study abroad. So the short-term study abroad is basically a, a culmination or a final piece to that semester course that they taught. For example, uh, Professor Frazier, who's a business professor, did a program in Germany, Luxembourg, and Belgium, and she put it together with the, um, the BA 101 business course. She taught that first semester, uh, had the students go through a number of different materials and, and different uh, subject matters. And then she, all the while, was connecting those subjects to what would be the short-term study abroad. Some of those courses, uh, or some of those students from that course, went on this program, and we opened it up to other students throughout the college. And so then we get this culmination of everything that went on during the semester class abroad. But much of the, the learning actually occurs in the scholastics abroad as well. We have orientation sessions before we ever leave, so we have three of those through continuing education. We also then prepare the students who have scholarships with project studies and different materials and homework. And then while abroad, oftentimes the students will continue, whether they have scholarships or not, to continue with their studies. Uh, there are lectures that happen while we're abroad from the faculty member from uh, tourist groups, from the agencies who've hired uh, different people to speak with us, different uh, museums and curators and so forth. So at the end of that program and the study abroad experience, it even continues because then the students tend to have projects that they complete and will even provide a presentation at a college-wide event. Now a third component to study abroad is also service learning. And this is oftentimes tied to the short-term study abroad. Now with service learning, that's where you have to kind of get your hands dirty and, and get into some, uh, some, some, maybe some activities that aren't you know, preferable always, but always seem to be a, a great learning experience in the end. So for example, 
uh, for service learning with our recent program to, again, Germany, Luxembourg, and Belgium. Uh, we went to a youth farm, and at this youth farm, they have horses and a lot of different activities. But in particular, the horses were used for a new therapy known as hippotherapy. And with hippotherapy, this allows uh, young youth who have different physical ailments to be able to learn a certain amount of balance, uh, which allows them for better mechanics, uh, walking, concentration, and so forth. And this is known as hippotherapy. And they get this through, of course, riding the horses. So what we did is we created a track uh, or dug a long trench, a circular trench around half of an acre. And then we filled up that dirt with a different bit of sand in, inside. And so the horses had a nice track in which to go around. It took a lot of work, uh, a bit of blood, sweat, and tears for sure. But in the end, we all felt very gratified with the work that we did. We've had other service learning projects for sure. Uh, in India, we'd had work to help out with villagers who needed to uh, have smokeless stoves installed in, installed in their homes and their huts and so forth uh, because emphysema and smoke and, and different uh, ailments have come from the original stoves that they use. Uh, I think about Senegal and the Gambia. We went to a number of villages and very arid climate uh, requiring people to have water sources. Some will have to walk many miles away to try to get uh, fresh water. So what we did was we went through a different um, nonprofit agency, discovered about $3,000 is what it took uh, to build a water well and an irrigation system in the villages and went to work to make sure that that happened. So an irrigation and water well was built in a Senegalese village. Um, and on and on, different service projects. So these are three aspects to study abroad, just to give you an introduction of what's available. Uh, professors get involved, faculty get involved, uh, students certainly are involved. Uh, I encourage more administrators and staff as well to join in. And uh, I guarantee that it'll change you as a person. Thank you.